Now, what are we trying to do? We're trying to gather data from a sample to answer a question about a large population. Well, if I gather data from a sample, one sample is certainly going to be different from the next sample, and it's going to be different from the next sample, and it's going to be different from the next sample. This idea is called sampling variability, that certainly we're going to get different values with different samples. So here they put a bunch of beads into a bucket and randomly chose um, what percent of the beads were red. <clears throat> Well, if they took sample sizes of n equals 20, as in this graph up top, you can see that the center of this distribution is at 30. And the spread goes from 10 all the way to 50. So we had a wide range of percent of red beads when we looked at 20 at a time. Now, what's going to happen if our sample size gets larger? The bottom dot plot is looking at uh, samples of size n equals 100. So the top one, we chose 20 beads at a time and found out what percent were red. The bottom, we chose 100 beads at a time and found out what percent were red. So when we looked at n equals 20, the variability was from 10 all the way to 50. The spread was very large. But when we looked at the percent of red beads when we chose 100 at a time, it went from 23 to 40. So the variability became much smaller. However, both of these have the same shape, roughly symmetrical. They both have the same center, 30, but they have very different spreads. So the larger the sample size, the smaller the variability is going to be. So when we take these samples, are we always going to get the true answer? No. Definitely not, but if we take enough of these samples, we'll be able to look at the data and find the center or the true answer of the entire population. Okay. This leads us to probably the most important um, definition this year. Okay. Statistically significant. What does it mean to be statistically significant? It means that the results were too large just to be due to chance alone. There's something going on here. There is some sort of cause and effect. Okay. What we did was looked at a study of, uh, we took 20 students um, and we took their pulse rate. Then we gave 10 of them caffeine and we gave the other 10 no caffeine. And then we took their pulse rate again. And we found the difference in their pulse rate. So that's what this table here is representing. Okay. The caffeine individuals had an average uh, pulse rate increase of 3.2. The students that did not get caffeine had an average pulse increase of 2.0. Why did their pulse rate go up? Who knows, could be due to the placebo effect because they thought they were drinking caffeine, so they thought their pulse rate would go up. We're, we're not sure why this happened. However, we can see that there's a difference of 1.2. So it appears that if students drink caffeine, their pulse rate will increase on an average of 1.2 beats per minute more than if they don't drink caffeine. So there clearly is a difference of 1.2 in the mean pulse rate change. Now, is that difference statistically significant? Or is that difference, could that difference just be due to random chance as far as which 10 students got uh, the caffeine, they were already gonna have a faster heart rate regardless of caffeine or not or the students who got the no caffeine drink, uh, they were already calmer and had a lower heart rate than the students that were in the caffeine group. Is this difference large enough so that we can say that it's not due to chance alone? Or could this happen? Could we, this just be due to random chance and who went into which group? Okay. So what we did was, simulated this down here in this dot plot. We took these 20 values and wrote them on index cards. 
and then these 20 values written on index cards and then we randomly selected 10 of these and calculated the difference so we had 20 index cards on each card we wrote one of these values the mean change we shuffled the cards into 10 uh, into two piles of 10 cards each randomly selected them we found the mean change in each of the two groups in the 100 times that we did this 19 times there was a, a difference of 1.2 or greater so just by random chance alone even if there is no difference 19 out of every 100 times we would expect a difference of 1.2 or more even when there is no difference therefore this is pretty common to happen even if there is no difference therefore we would say that this difference of 1.2 is pretty common therefore it is not statistically significant because it's very plausible or very common to happen just due to random chance oh i did a bad job um